It's Aunt Angela and you, and I'm going to be running for Birkenhead and it's the St James Ward in Birkenhead. So I'm going to be talking mainly about the children today. I am going to be talking about the immigration, but mainly I'm going to put the concentration on the children because I don't think any party is allowed to speak about the children. They're only allowed to say certain points. Uh, they're not allowed to go into really horrific details. So I was going to say if there's any children in the room, which is not to let your kids leave because there's going to be a lot of graphic content. <clears throat> so I'm actually running to be a councillor with a restraining order against all MPs, which I'm so proud of. <laughs> um, yeah, because I went to my MP with child abuse. He had me um, arrested, I'm battered and charged. Um, and he's put a restraining order on me for life against all MPs, which I'm allowed to challenge at any point I want. So when the party, when they come and attack us and say, oh, you shouldn't be running for, because you've got a restraining order, I'm going to challenge them then and then in the court because I'm allowed to go to my MP with allegations of abuse. They, they, knew, I, they knew I was coming. So when I basically got arrested and the paperwork came out, I went back through the paperwork and they knew I was coming two years before, yeah. Because um, I was ring, 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 they were ignore, ignore, ignore. They knew I was coming and they deliberately came down, got two of the staff to assault me and get me out the building. So I left, yeah, I left in my own accord, shouting, you know, paedophiles, ah, ah, ah. You know, going on one, yeah, on the way out. <laughs> but I was shouting, I know who your boss is, Harriet Harmon, paedophile information exchange. <laughs> they ragged me, they ragged me in the car, <laughs> yeah, boom, <laughs> in the car, boom, in the car. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, I go back and I think, who the hell do you think you are doing this to me, Mick Whitley? So I type his name in. He's only sat on the board of United the Union with Jack Dromey, Harriet Harmon's Harm, uh, Harry husband. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, so the paedophile rings come after me, have they got me slammed by me inside police and a restraining <laughs> order? Oh, yeah. That's your banner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but anyway, so let's talk about the paedophile ring because the paedophile ring is the most biggest paedophile ring going and they're still breathing, actually breathing today. I can't believe they're breathing. But anyway, they are breathing. Um, Tom O'Carroll is um, basically the founder of Paedophile Information Exchange. Um, What's his background, Tom He's Walker? basically a paedophile. But is it, does he work for United he worked Union? For, right? He worked yeah. for, um, he worked, first of all, he started off as a teacher. I think he was charged. Um, and then he, he wanted to run for a Labour. He was back in the Labour Council. Um, the Labour threw him out of the party because he was a paedophile. But then he went to a bash in the House of Lords in 2019 mm -hmm. with the House of Lords uh, to a charity event. So what is a paedophile going in the House of Lords for? I don't get it, but I do get it because they're all a paedophile ring. So yeah. it goes... Um, has anyone ever heard of the independent inquiries to child sexual abuse? Yeah, I've watched some of them. Yeah, well there's a, um, a newspaper company called The Berry Messenger and um, years ago, in about the 1970s, um, Cyril Smith bounced into the office because a, a mm. woman called Barbara Castle, she was an MP, mm. she put a second dossier together, not, not the first Jeffrey Dickens one, a second one, and then Cyril Smith came into the office of the Benny Messenger and said, I want all your stuff now. Or, or, and he said, no, no, you're not having nothing. 24 hours later, a special branch come in and remove everything from his office and threaten him with 12 years in jail if he didn't give him everything. So uh, Barbara Castle died, but the Benny Messenger in 2015 or 17, I can't remember the date off the top of my head, he actually testified for Barbara Castle uh, in her defence on her death. Now he's seen this paedophile ring and he said the paedophile ring is pie, paedophile information exchange, which obviously links to Tom O'Carroll, Harriet Harmon, Jack Dramey, Patricia Hewitt, you know, we can go on all day long with the names of pie, Lord Justice Full Out, it was um, the judge that was passing it off everything. I forgot where I was up to, where was he up to? Tom O'Carroll as well. Yeah, so Tom O'Carroll. I do a little Google search on Tom O'Carroll and a business comes up in London, company's house. Uh, he's registered his business, so I phoned up the, the company and said to him, do you realise you've got a paedophile working for you? Within half an hour he thought I was mad, he phoned me back and he was like, I'm so sorry, I've just done a simple Google search, I actually did oh, think you were mad, yeah, I actually did think you were mad, I've got all this on record by the way guys, I'm, I'm a bad girl. Um, he said he thought you were mad, so they kicked him out of the business, he moved him to company's house, he had to use company's house as a default address. So I phoned company's house and I said, if you don't remove him from your registered prolific paedophile, I'll turn up on your doorstep because that's his address. 
So the, he had to move again. Yeah. So when I actually moved into the third business, I was on the phone to them and recorded them again. <laughs> Sorry, can't help it. And um, they mentioned the first business. So I was like, whoa, what the hell's going on here? So anyway, I sent Pete Fowler, was in, yeah. Got the name of the business, the address, blah, blah, blah. He goes in, another 790 to 7, what is it, 788 to 790 Finchley Road? Yeah. Can yeah. anyone remember the Finchley Road scandal? Yeah. Yeah. Another one of them. Peter Fowler wanted us to go into the building and check out this bookshop, yeah? Nothing in there. So he goes to like the mailing box and obviously he's going through all the, the mail. Thousands and thousands of businesses running from this address. Thousands, she's talking quids of cash, you know, all little loan companies, you know, you're talking that. So anyway, <clears throat> a question, I was like, well, where's this bookshop? Is he selling books, what? Turns out he was selling a book called Paedophilia, The Radical Case, um, which is a paedophilia book. Now, if anyone reads that, I couldn't even read past chapter three. It's disgusting. It's vile. How that man even walks and I can't even swear right now yet or breathes um, basically it's like they're, they're, there's basically a lot of people experimenting on children experimenting on them having orgasms and it's absolutely disgusting what made me stop and put the book down was they'd done so much to one child that the child glazed in a stare and there was nothing quite it, there was no expression coming on the face I had to put the book down can do them. How the hell can you sell it? How the hell can you give him a bookshop on company's house and sell that book when we're saying what we're saying? Wow. And, he, and, and do you know what? Let's talk about Harriet Harmon. Then I found their name on a family court document to silence us. 2007 yeah. secrecy and privacy in the family court. Yeah? yeah. Her name's all over it. Yeah. And she said, oh, we've got to silence the <clears throat> newspapers. We've got to silence the parent and the children. By the way, on the children, no one's been allowed to speak. The children haven't been allowed to speak because they're, they're, they're gagged just as much as us. The parents are gagged. The professionals, are you know, they've got a non-disclosure order, secrecy agreements. The newspapers won't touch me. They've got D-notices. Mm. The government won't touch it. The police won't investigate social services. Nobody's doing the job. The courts know what's going on. These are human trafficking. Our children through these court systems like, we've got to ask the question, when these kids are getting trafficked back to here, back to there, back to there, the judge makes the overall decision and puts that child back in that house, knowing the full circumstances. Yeah. So we have to take the due decree down, as well as the family courts, the police. So I'm just going to give you a little few things, yeah, what I've actually came across. Can I just get in before that, yeah. just to just put a bit of um, info in? So, uh, um, I heard you mention Cyril Smith. Now, you know, with me, it's about accountability. It's not just Cyril Smith. Lord Janna, yeah. Lord This Anna, is what I'm saying, up. John. There's many, many MPs who've been in, 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 in these kind of situations who were sexual, and nothing ever gets done. Or nothing, there's no accountability. <laughs> there's no accountability you know I mean? because they're all still in power today. We're talking Harriet Harman. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. just took Boris Johnson's call for the COVID inquiry. Mm -hmm. She sat there quizzing Boris Johnson in a courtroom. Yeah, how is that woman allowed to breathe? Do you know when she breaks our human rights and our children's human rights? Guess who sat on the Human Rights Council? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know when our Facebook's getting attacked? Oh, guess where she's sat now? Digital media and culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah? We're talking a paedophile ring that's deliberately blocking me from getting information out to the public. And they know who I am. They know. They damn well know who I am. And they know what I've got to say is true. Because they attack me all the time. I've had counter-terrorism threaten me. They phone me at nine o'clock at night, making a malicious call, breathing heavily down the phone, telling me I'm in danger, telling me to remove me Facebook, remove me YouTube. Um, I, I actually phoned up Merseyside Police. I actually put a complaint in with them, registered the complaint, and they come back with, the, the constable should have phoned you on your mobile phone. Nothing about threatening me, telling me to remove me YouTube down, stop speaking about the child abuse, the kids and all this. No, 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 we won't. Well, anyway, I've got... I've got um, Got to know where that came from because I threatened him. Um, and I said, unless you tell me within five minutes where this has come from, I'm going to cause a fucking war. And he knew he, I knew, he knew it would. So he told me it was the family court. So I go to the Sun newspaper because I, I have got a bit of a problem. They were the ones that, you know, done the damage in Hillsborough. So I picked on them. I used them as a little example. Yeah, so I recorded them as well. Got that as well. 
Um, anyway, I was arguing with them, telling me story about what my kids, what my kids have gone through, the family court, social services. We get towards the end of a 10 minute conversation and they go, I'm sorry, love, can't put, you know, can't put it in the paper. I mean, you give me one reason why you can't put my story. It's law, it's law. You tell me what part of the law stops you from printing my story. It's law, it's law. I was like, well, tell me what it is that stopped. And she was like, it's the family court. I said, what are they threatening you with? She said, 12 months contempt of court. So the, the newspapers, if they speak about my case and they've refused, they've refused my case. They, I, I can tell them all day long. And they go, no, no, we can't put it in, the, we can't put it in the paper. Yeah, they're not allowed to talk about the children. And, you know, I found, I think it was 85 million images of child sexual abuse on Europol's web. Uh, they've done like a, um, a database, Europol have done a database. And there's 85 million child abuse videos and images on that system. Now, everyone's been saying, yeah, when these children... When the, the police do the job on these videos and they get charged with, I've got one in here, Liverpool Echo has just been released this week, 19,000 indecent images, disturbing images. That's where the images are going, Europol. So if, if we're talking 85 million individual photos and videos of children being horrifically raped, we've got a big problem. Yeah, a big, massive problem. Andrew, massive. Andrew, do you know the amount of um, um, sex offenders that are on that uh, that are on the sex offenders list in Parliament? I think it's one hundred and seventy-four, but I can't find the article. It's, but I remember it's it. It's actually nearly three hundred. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The last time I looked, it's like nearly three hundred or something. Yeah, I think it's three hundred. Yeah, it's two hundred and ninety something sex offenders. In but anyway, Parliament. I'll just give you. Yeah. So. ICSA, the Independent Inquiry, yeah, found more than 700 allegations of sexual abuse against hundreds of its staff. This is in mm. one care room, yeah. Um, individuals connected. Oh, sorry, so there was individuals connected to that. Just three children's <coughs> homes. <coughs> oh, sorry, so there was 700 allegations in three children's homes just on that one, <coughs> yeah. Uh, the mirror said social services are at the centre of Britain's worst child grooming scandal. Telford and Reckon received 715 warnings, 303 referrals made, made to children uh, to children abuse through exploitation team. The Children's Commissioner said one in eight children who are sexually abused are identified by professionals. So that's not very good, is it? So, so one out of eight is getting seen and they're seven failing. are letting go. Yeah, they're failing, completely failing, yeah. <coughs> So Hesley Children's Home leaked documents show Ofsted has been informed 40 times three years previous to the home's closure when the business as when the business has done wrong, they go and change the company's <coughs> name, they change the business and they open another one and, and start the reign of terror again. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So that needs to stop as well because companies house take people on um you know, I can't remember the words of it, like they, they, they trust people to file their company accounts. And these paedophiles that have got companies, he's not, he's not <coughs> filing the, the right accounts. How can a company that's meant to protect us, the British people, go off someone meant to tell them the truth? Mm. It's just ridiculous. It's like a future emotional harm. Have they not done this on purpose? Mm. Like, seriously. Yeah. So the mirror inside the hell of private homes with missing kids, rape and drugs. So there's even in the mirror. Uh, you know, they're saying that there's missing kids in this. And according to The Guardian, 37,070 30, <coughs> children go missing in one year in the UK. Nearly 38,000 children missing in one year. Come on. <coughs> so the Lanks Live, drug dealers are working in children's homes to recruit uh, to recruit kids. Mm -hmm. So we've even got them going and working in with the kids. Yeah. <laughs> And Rotherham sex abuse for our John here because he's um, he's on it. A victim was ferried to gangs and abused by taxi drivers, paid by council, uh, by, paid by council staff. Yeah, so that's in your town, John. And a Gwynedd care, care home boy was wrapped in cling film and gagged by his arms and his legs and his mouth. These are just some of the stories in the children's homes. Like, you can just type a Google search in of what's going on with the, with the children's homes and it all comes up. But the thing that they haven't, they've never ever done yet is put it all together. 
Oh, they've, indi- they've individually said, oh, this, this homie has raped all these kids and abused all these kids, and we've got 118 children in this home. But they never put that home together, and that home together, and that home together, and all of it together into mm. one big investigation, and we pull it like Tommy Robinson done, yeah? yeah? We pull it like that, we put it all in front of us, and we pull out the paedophiles, because yeah. the, the names have got to come up again, and again, and again, and again, and again, with all these different children. And this is what we need to do, we need to make a full investigation. National Housing Party fully supports, you know, people that are campaigning for child abuse, you know, if any children are out there that hear any of this and that that's happening to you, Make sure you get in contact with our party. John, is there an email address that we can give out? The email address uh, is right yeah, there, guys. Yeah, I'll put it in the link. Yeah. I will put it in the If link. anyone needs any party. help, yeah, please contact National Housing Party because we will help you, okay? And do you know what? I can't wait to run. And do you know what? We've got some amazing people in this party, guys, like literally amazing people. I can put my trust in their hands because I'm not very political, really, but I will learn. Yeah, <laughs> but, as long as, uh, but we've all got different skills, and yeah. together we're we're, we're going to be unbeatable. Amen. So thank you very much. Amen. 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 Amen.